Hey guys, it's Adrian here. We are back from a fabulous week in Park City. Managed to reconnect with a friend of mine who goes all the way back to kindergarten. So we haven't seen each other since high school. Well, we've seen each other a couple times over the last uh, couple of years, but this was really special. So we had a great time and it was a great way to just sort of clear the, uh, clear the air, clear the energy and just get back to trading and focus on what we're doing. Today, comes on the heels of a bunch of banking catastrophes. So all these big interest rate hikes that we've seen over the past year seem to have pushed things a little bit too far too fast. A couple of you submitted questions. You don't really understand why it's affected uh, the banks the way that it did, why it affected the markets the way that it did. In a nutshell, this is how it works. The banks bought a bunch of treasury bills back when interest rates were zero. Interest rates were maybe 1% for a long time. Now all of a sudden interest rates balloon. So when the banks had to go and cover their deposits because they had some people withdrawing some big funds, right, from the banks, then they had to cash in those treasuries and when interest rates rise, the face value of your T-bill falls. So if they would have been able to hold those bills out for the 20 years that they were uh, set for, that they were gonna reach maturity, then they would have had their full redemption value. They weren't able to do that. They had to sell them early and that's what started the sell-off. So now we're looking at the markets and the sell-off has bounced back. That's because there's been a bunch of very positive news from the banks. A lot of uh, the government's stepping in, other banks are stepping in and we see that the markets are sort of whipsawing back and forth. That's been the case for the past week. But if you've been following along in the first hour trading pit, and if you're following along with the triple Qs, then you should see that there's lots and lots of opportunities. So let's go to the charts and take a look at what we saw today. You see that we had a move higher this morning in the NASDAQ futures and in the Qs, of course. Triple Qs always follow along with what uh, the NDX is doing. And so far today, We've had sort of a mixed bag of up and down, and I have been trading it as such. So we've had lots and lots of opportunities that have been setting up on the long side and on the short side. What I've been looking for to tell me whether or not it's time to get into one of these is Confluence. So most of you are coming to the live event in Las Vegas to Super Vol Sunday. If you haven't signed up for that yet, there's still time. Got a few seats left, probably two or three seats that we can squeeze in at the event space. And then we've also got the live stream, of course, you can watch from home. But what I want you to think about as you're getting ready for this event is focusing on everything coming together. So a bunch of you ask questions like, you know, well, how do I know when to take a trade, when not to take a trade? It's really not as complicated as it sounds, but it requires focusing on a number of, of things that are going on simultaneously. So the first thing to look at is always going to be this stuff right here. Natural support and resistance. Where are prices setting so that you can anticipate what's gonna happen? So for instance, if I get up to this line right here that was resistance earlier in the day, and that overlaps with a move that's two standard deviations away from the average, that indicates to me that I do have a possible short sale and I have a target all the way back down here from 308.89 down to 307.99. So you've got about a 90 cent target on that move if it should happen, if the whole thing sets up, if things start moving in our direction. But I also need to keep an eye on this guy right here. So we had a lot of elasticity in the price the last time that we got up and tagged this number. So that 308.99 level is not a really firm resistance and we need to focus on where it is that things are going to line up better and where it is that we can anticipate a reversal that has lower risk. So in this case, risk is going to be up above this high. If we get up to that pivot line, we know that price elasticity has been all the way up into that 309.40 level and we've got to figure out just how much risk we're willing to put on with a trade. If it gets up and it hits this pivot, are you gonna short it knowing that you've got about 35 cents worth of risk 
that's completely up to you, right? So this is where you have to put the pieces of these puzzles together for yourself. Everybody's different. So when, when people want concrete answers, when people want to know exactly what level they should be taking something at, the answer is there is no exact level. You have to figure out how you want to put the trade together, how you want to put the trade on. For me, 35 cents worth of risk, you know, that might be worth it. Um, but I want to see a bunch of things, a bunch of factors come together. So I'm going to look at this right here. As long as that is moving sideways like that, right? So we've got this, this stochastic up here, and it's really indicating that the trend strength is pretty strong. We've got a lot of just uh, dips and, you know, the, the fast stochastic is dipping below the slow, but they're sort of wrapping around each other like a couple of snakes. That says to me that right now we've got a lot of price persistency. So if we get up and we hit that pivot line and we wind up being 2SD out, then we might want to say if it has a reversion, that reversion is going to have a first target right here at the average, right? So we've got a two standard deviation move that indicates a high probability of reversion to the mean. The mean is just down to here. It's not all the way back down in here. And we can use these things to go and sort of handicap what it is that we think is going to happen. So see where the overlaps are. See what the confluence is on across the board here. Use your anchored VWAPs to figure out what's going on. Right now we don't have an anchor drawn yet because we don't know where this is going to end up. But generally speaking, if you go and you put these things together in a very logical way like this, you can keep yourself out of trouble and you can get in front of opportunity. So that's a look at the charts. And that's the logic behind what I'm doing. This is the kind of stuff that I want you to think about before the April 23rd event in Las Vegas. Just get your heads wrapped around this so that when we're in that room together, everybody's sort of on the same page and thinking the same way. There's no absolutes. There is no right. There is no wrong. It's just a matter of did you look for the confluence and did you set the trade up in a way that makes sense. All right. I hope that helps. And I'm going to see everybody tomorrow in the first hour trading pit. Thanks for watching.